Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock and it's time for another video. This is a five by five. Now, five by five, if you've never seen it before, is where I take five subjects related to magic. I spend five minutes talking about each subject and then I move on to the next subject. It's always quick, it's always snappy. You never know what you're going to get. And this week I am doing a live review special. So I'm doing a mini review special where I'm going to be doing five reviews, five mini reviews over the course of the video. Now, um, obviously, all the latest and greatest and newest stuff I review on uh, the Craig and Ryan Review Show or on a review show special, uh, which goes up on a Sunday or a Wednesday. However, today I'm looking at five items that have maybe a little bit older. Some of them came out a few months ago. Uh, some of them came out a few years ago, and uh, I'm just reviewing five items that normally wouldn't make it into the review show, but with Ryland, normally wouldn't make it into the review show that I do on a Sunday, but, you know, it's worth talking about things like this. So, this is a mini review special, and without further ado, we're going to get straight into it. Okay, so the first trick I'm going to be reviewing is The Great Escape by Tenyo Magic. Now, this is available uh, from all good magic shops. I got mine from Alakazam Magic. And what is The Great Escape? Well, really, uh, I'd never heard of The Great Escape before, but it's their version of Ali Bongo's Dice Through Mirror. I think it's Ali Bongo's Dice Through Mirror. The Dice Through Mirror... might not be Ali, actually, now thinking about it. Let me know in the comments. I'm sure there's somebody knowledgeable. The Dice Through Mirror was one of the best tricks that I ever had. Unfortunately, I haven't got it anymore. But the Dice Through Mirror, I remember getting it when uh, one of my first trips to Blackpool uh, Magic Convention. And what it was, it was a case... Uh, and you had a mirror as well. So you had the case looked at, you had the mirror, and it had a piece of ribbon on the mirror. You put the mirror inside the, uh, the inside the case. They hold on to the ribbon, so you can't so it can't go anywhere. You put a dice on top of the mirror. Somebody cups their hands underneath the mirror, and you see the dice melt through. It looks really good. It looks great. And for many years, when I was table hopping in restaurants, I used to do that trick. It used to just fit in my inside pocket, and it was one of those tricks that packed small played big um everything felt like it could be examined and and unfortunately i lost mine a few years ago and i haven't been able to do it since well uh, i didn't realize tenure have actually re-bought it out i don't know if they've got the rights to it or something i'm not too sure however the great escape is basically that dice through mirror mirror now there are a couple of variants first of all you're not using a mirror you're using a piece of metal second of all the uh the uh ribbon is not attached to the piece of metal uh, instead, it's it's attached to the case, and it's not a ribbon now. It's a piece of cloth, and the reason is uh, how Tenure have made it is you take the cloth and you wrap it over the dice, and uh, and so you can see the shape of the dice through the cloth. And then it goes through. Now, the instructions tell you not to use a spectator's hands, but instead they tell you to use a, a glass. So you have a glass underneath the, um, the whole thing and they see it drop through and land into the glass, which is an interesting idea. Um, I think I'd probably still do it into the spectator's hands, but in essence, it still works the same way. I think that the original is slightly better made, but I might be looking at it through rose-tinted glasses. Uh, we've talked before about how Tenyo, uh, a lot of the Tenyo stuff has a toy factor. It's very um, uh, fun to play with. This is no exception. Uh, we've also talked about sometimes Tenyo tricks aren't really suitable for real-world performing situations. I believe this is. Yes, it looks like a magic trick, but hell, if you're going out performing as a magician, I don't think that's the worst thing in the world that you're going out doing magic tricks. So The Great Escape is fantastic. I mean, if you think about it, it packs more. It's an instant reset. It feels like everything can be examined. Not everything can be examined, but it feels like everything can be examined. Um, and m more importantly, it is super, super visual. If you get them to cut the hands together, magic happens in the spectator's hands. I think you could probably do this trick twice, once into a cup and once into the spectator's hands. And I don't think the fact that you're doing it again would affect the trick or the performance of the trick in any way, shape or form. Um, it's just a really fun trick. It works really well. Um, I'm going to do a performance of it right now, but before I do, I'm going to tell you this gets 90%. Uh, it's slightly less than I'd give the original, if the original was brought back out today, but it's still really good. So 90% uh, for the Dice Through Mirror variant, it's called The Great Escape, 90% for The Great Escape. Uh, let's have a look at a performance, and then we're going to go on to the next review. Jack, I've got a few things here. I've got a bulldog clip. Nice. Okay. Well, it's a very small bulldog clip, so it's probably more of a poodle clip. 
uh, and have a look at it and check if it's okay. Watch out, it bites. Are we good? Um, wonderful. We also have a, uh, a dice. We have a glass. Uh, we have a sheet of metal. Check that out. Make sure that's okay. Make sure there's nothing weird about it. And then finally, and most importantly, we have this frame with a recessed bottom, and it has uh, a piece of fabric attached to it, okay? Interesting. A few different things. And uh, the, the piece of metal goes right here inside the, the frame. You can see that, right? You can see it from both sides. It goes right there inside the frame. Yeah. And then what you do is you take the... Uh, the, the, the this. Dice. Dice, thank you. No, it's a die. <laughs> it is. Dice is when it's more than one. Okay, you want to put it on? English lessons as well as magic. Yes, put it right there in the middle. Wonderful. And then uh, I'm going to wrap this around. Oh, so it goes right there. It's really important it stays roughly in the middle. And you can bulldog clip that there to hold it all in place. Just put the bulldog clip there. Neat as can, it's more in the middle, that's great. And you can see it from this side, you can see it from this side, right? Yeah. We put the glass here. Now you examined everything, didn't you? Yeah. You can, you can push down on that. That's on the solid piece of metal, so there's no way that's going anywhere, right? Watch, all you have to do is say the magic words, abracadabra. Abracadabra. Watch that dice, you'll actually see it sink down through the piece of metal into this, and you can see it's not actually, the metal's solid, you can check it out again, Jack. Make sure it's solid. There's a rule of magic, never repeat a trick. I'm going to do it one more time. Put it right there. Take the uh, the die and uh, and put it on top. That's very good. Kind of more in the middle, but that's okay. I'm going to do that. And you're going to pull it tight and then uh, strap it in. Perfect. So this time we're not even going to use the uh, the glass. So push it down. It is solid. It's on that metal, yeah? Cut your hands together over the uh, the thing, like your Oliver Twist asking for more. And don't forget the magic words. Just say the magic words. Abracadabra. And just like that, it sinks down one more time right through the piece of metal. That's the frame. That's the piece of metal. And that is nothing more than a miracle. Okay, so the next trick is Tribute to Veroni. Now, Tribute to Veroni is one of my favourite Henry Evans tricks. Now, what is Tribute to Veroni? Well, basically, simply put, it's Henry's um, handling of a Veroni trick, I believe, from reading the instructions many, many years ago. Um, basically, what it is, is it's a deck of cards. It makes a great opener. Uh, it's a deck of cards, you take the cards out of the box, and as soon as you take the cards out of the box, the box shrinks to a fraction of its size. Now, this isn't the, the sort of the John Cornelius shrinking card box that got popularised uh, through the 80s and 90s. This is a very different method of doing the shrinking card box. The card box is then put to one side, and you take the deck of cards, which is a regular deck, you have a card taken out the deck, and uh, or looked at in the deck, and then after they've looked at it in the deck, you then proceed to um, uh, you, you then proceed to tell them you're going to make the card vanish. You spread through the deck. The card has apparently vanished, and then once the card has apparently vanished, you um, uh, you take the card box that's been there the whole time. You open up the card box, and when you open up the card box, inside is uh, a folded up card and the folded up card is the card that they've picked. That's exactly what it is. Now the method behind this is super practical. Uh, there's no angle issues at all. The gimmick that's been used to make the deck disappear has been used before by a variety of different creators. Uh, Greg Wilson on Card Stunts, I believe it was, had some great stuff with this particular gimmick uh, in one of his opening routines, but Greg's not the only person to use it. Uh, what uh, Henry has done is taken that gimmick and applied it to a full routine that just makes logical sense. Uh, you don't need a table. You can do it in the spectator's hands. You also don't need to do the routine all in one go. And what I mean by that is you can use the shrinking card box as an opening trick. So you can, at the very beginning of the trick, make the card box shrink. You can then put the card box to one side. You can do your 457 phase ambitious card routine at that point if you want to. And then at the end, or at some point during your card act, you can have a card picked, make it vanish, and once it's vanished, it's inside the card box. So there's a lot that you can actually do with this. There's a lot of variants. If you've ever seen Henry Evans before, he is a very clever 
magician. There's a reason he's a FISM champion. Uh, he's, in my opinion, one of Argentina, uh, Argentina's best magicians and brings out a lot of really cool stuff. Tribute to Verone is no exception. The nice thing about this, it is completely and totally self-working. There's no skill involved in this trick at all. You can do it anytime, anywhere. Literally after watching the tutorial, within half an hour, you'll be doing it. It's that simple. Uh, the reset uh, is very easy. All you have to do is put the folded up card back in the deck and you reset it in the box and put everything away in your pocket and you reset. Um, I would advise you, because uh, I've done this for years, if you are going to do this uh, from table to table, wrap it, this will make sense if you've got it, once the gimmick is set up around the deck, wrap an elastic band around everything to keep it in place in your pocket. That's the, that's the only thing that you need to do. And then you're ready to go into it whenever you want to. Um, yeah, I'm going to give it 90%. I think that Tribute of Rhone is very, very good. I've always been a big fan of Tribute of Rhone, so I'm going to show you a performance of that right now. And then we're going to move on to the next review. I'm uh, going to show you a trick with a deck of cards. I'm going to show you the difference between an illusion and real magic. Ooh. Now, an illusion is basically the concept of illusion is you think you see something but it's not what you're actually seeing yeah so what am i holding right now deck of cards be more specific i'm holding the box, box. and inside the box there's obviously the deck of cards yeah yeah now with the deck of cards you can get big cards you can get little cards these are called standard rider back playing cards yeah now you, you, you would you believe me if i told you that what you're actually seeing right now is an illusion but it's a box of cards? No, you see, if I snap my fingers, the illusion starts to break. And if I take the cards out the box, you can see the box is a lot smaller, you the see. Fuck? The box is a lot smaller. You see, <clears> it's <throat> an illusion, Jack. It's not real. It's meant to cover not. <laughs> but now, you see, that's an illusion. Let me let me go one step further. Let me take out the jokers. We're not going to need the jokers for this. We're just going to use the deck of cards. Let me go one step further. All right, buddy? Okay. Now... You know as well as me, there's 52 cards in the deck. 52 cards, 52 possibilities, right? Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have you pick one of them. I'm just going to look away and I'm going to riffle up and you're going to say stop. Stop. There. I'm going to show the camera. Can you see that there, Michael? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay, watch. I said I was going to show you the difference between an illusion and real magic. This is real magic. You're thinking of a card, yeah? Yeah. If I snap my fingers, your card has gone from the deck. There's a uh, double backer in there because that's what these decks come with because this is from Penguin and they always put a double backer in there. Little that's penguin. got nothing to do with the trick. But you'll see that your card has completely gone. Do you see your card? What was your card? Ten of clubs. You see a ten of spades there. Do you see a ten of clubs? Where's it gone? Do you see a ten of clubs? No. No? It's vanished. It's vanished. Well, do you know where it's gone? Do you remember we made the box? Tiny, tiny, tiny? It's, not, it's never in there. Inside <coughs> the card box. There's now a folded up playing card, which I can't even get out. Do you want to reach in there and get it out? You're, you're more graceful than me are, you are, Jack. How many people in marketing does it take to pull a card out of a mini box? <laughs> take your time. Well, Jack's doing this, I'll tell you all the joke. Yeah, I'll get it. There we go. Thank God, because my jokes are terrible. Unfold it, Jack. What was the card again? The Ten of Clubs. Hey. And I think that's nothing short of a miracle. Okay, trick number three, review number three. We're going to be looking at the whole thing by Daryl. Now, Daryl uh, was one of the greatest magicians of all time. If you didn't know, passed away at the Magic Castle a few years ago. Um, and his entire range of products got brought out by Murphy's Magic. And the Daryl Legacy line has slowly been released by Murphy's ever since that point. Um, the whole thing got released about a year and a half ago. And I'll tell you right now, if you're a stand-up performer, if you're a performer that performs stand-up, now that could be on stage, it could be in a parlour show, it could even be doing big tables in a, in a close-up environment, wherever it is. If you do any type of stand-up comedy magic, then the whole thing is a great trick to go for. Um, because it is designed as kind of a bigger trick. Now, Murphy's sell these in two sizes. You can get the parlour size, or you can get the stage size. So you can actually have them really big and it'll work on stage. Now, I'll be honest with you, I've been doing this trick for years. I had this trick way before Daryl passed away. I got it from Daryl. 
um, way before the legacy line even existed. This, for me, is one of Daryl's favourite tricks. And a lot of people go, oh, no, 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 no. Daryl's favourite trick is ultimate ambition. Or Daryl's favourite trick is, is cross thoughts. Or Daryl's favourite trick is his colour-changing knives. Or whatever it may be. And look, here's the thing. Daryl was known as the magician's magician. Um, because he could do anything and he could do it well. You know, his acrobatic knots has been used by magicians all over the world. Most of his routines have, but in my opinion, the whole thing is one of the best tricks that Daryl brought out. I think it went under the radar a little bit. I think it went under the radar when Murphy's brought it out again, um, which I think is a shame because it's a great trick. And also, it's very easy to do. It really just uses an Elmsley count, which is at the beginning of the trick. If you can do an Elmsley count, you can do the routine. And it's one of those tricks that pack small plays massive. And when I say pack small, I really mean it pack small. It's just some jumbo cards that fit into the pockets and you're good to go anytime, anywhere. So if you're doing table hopping to big tables at a corporate or something, this is a great routine to start off with. Um, if you're doing stand-up, if you're an MC, if you're a compare, this is great. I do quite a lot of comparing and this is a perfect little bit to do in between routines. Um, you have to be a kind of a comedy magician to pull this off. That's something that bear in mind. But other than that, it's great. I would highly recommend getting uh, the whole thing. I've been doing it for years. And also it's one of those tricks that would work really well on social media, but you don't really see anybody doing it on social media, which is a big shame. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm gonna give this 100% because I have been using this for a very long time. Uh, I've got three of these. <laughs> I have every single case that I have, I have one of these in. The only thing that takes a little bit of practice is just getting the scripting down because you can confuse yourself when you first learn this um, because in order for the, the, that's if you want to perform it the same way that Daryl does, which I do, I perform it the same way Daryl does. And that, that script can take a little bit of practice in order to just make sure you know what you're doing. But outside of that, it's the perfect stand-up trick in my opinion. So it's really good. You're going to see a performance of it and then we'll move on to the next review. Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It's six o'clock. It's time for a Magic Live. Today I'm going to be doing a routine called The Whole Thing by Daryl. Now this is part of the Daryl Legacy line through Murphy's Magic. You can get it from all good magic dealers. It's one of the best stand-up tricks you can learn. Uh, and they do it in parlor size and stage size. I'm going to try and do it close up to Matt. No, you're Jack. It's very early in the morning. I've just come in and we haven't had coffee yet, have we, Jack? So we're going to give this a go. How many of you can move Matt? It's, it's simple. <laughs> so, Jack, here's the thing this is a trick with four cards. Now, all four of the cards are special. This card here is a whole card. The reason it's a whole card is because there's a hole in the card. The second card is a whole card because it's a whole card. Now, this card is also a whole card because it's a whole card. And this card is a whole card because it's a card with a hole in it. So, we have two whole cards and two whole cards. Now, the thing is, this whole card, not the card with a hole in it, but the whole card, this whole card has got a red back. Now, the interesting thing about the red backed whole card is if I take that whole card and I put a whole card on the whole card, it looks like a spot card. Now, the interesting thing is, because that's not really magic, but if I snap my fingers, now we've got a spot card here, we've got a spot card here, and we've got a spot card here. That's kind of weird. Now, that's not really magic, though, still. This is magic. If I snap my fingers, this card here actually becomes a real spot card, as in, it's a spot card. It's not a whole card with a whole card. It's now a spot card. The interesting thing is if I take the spot card and I tap it to the other three whole cards like this, one, two, three, four, five, now what we get is we get a whole bunch of spots, which is kind of weird. So we've got a whole bunch of spots and we've got a whole card. This is still a spot card, this is still a spot card. That's a spot card with the red back, that's a uh, whole card, sorry, that's a whole card, that's a whole card. Take the whole card and the whole card and you put it together, right? But what you do is you put it together like this. Now when you put it together like this and you snap your fingers, it looks like you get a big spot card. You don't get a big spot card, that's actually a hole with a spot. It's a spot with a hole in it. So what we have here is we have a whole card with the red back. We have a spot card with a hole we have this which is a whole bunch of spots and we have this which is a spot card that all makes sense what i don't understand is where the hole comes from any questions jack just one the fuck just happened <laughs> okay so the next review is um f uh, it's called fate it got marketed uh, uh sort of maybe around about september october uh, last year by um, Alakazam Magic, and it's by John Carey. Now, if you don't know who John Carey is, John has made a reputation in this industry for taking um, magic, uh, card magic especially, although John is very good at coins as well, but he's, he's made a reputation for taking card magic that is normally quite complicated and, and normally quite technically demanding and simplifying it down to its simplest components right that's what john does and he does that very well now um 
this this particular routine is very simple. And by the way, just 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 to say, even though John, but yeah, I heard people go going, oh, John's not very good at sleight of hand. He is. He's incredible at it, but he just chooses to go down the simplest route, and I commend him for that. I really do. But anyway, um, what this is is this is called Fate. It's John's latest trick, as far as I'm aware, physical product at any point. And what it is is it's a very simple routine that's basically it's a mentalism trick and it's a card revelation in essence that's what it is it's a card revelation uh, and i know that there's going to be people that overlook this because of its simplicity because it is very very simple because in essence you have five cards and um well i'm, I'm going to show you a performance of it in a minute but it is very very simple two things that i want to point out simple is not bad Simple is great. You know, it allows you to focus on presentation. And if you watch the live performance of John doing this, his presentation is really strong for it. The other thing is the half an hour tutorial that comes with this. That's right, half an hour tutorial. Uh, John goes through everything, but he also spends some time talking about Equivoke. Now, John has done full-on academies in the past on Equivoke. He's one of the... Uh, sort of modern experts in Equivoke. And so just having that little bit of teaching right there, in my opinion, is worth the money. But yeah, I think it was Vernon that said, you know, one for one revelation and a hundred forces, you know, one trick. But if you know a hundred revelations and one force, you know a hundred tricks. And that's the perfect example for this. This is in essence, a revelation of a Equivoked card but it's the presentation that John uses that makes this an interesting piece. Now, in all honesty, uh, this won't fit my performance. I'm gonna perform it twice, actually. In a second, I'm gonna show you how I do plan on performing it. The way that John teaches it is not, doesn't mean it's not good. It's just, I know my character. I, and watching John do it, he did it brilliantly. And I can see John sitting down with a bunch of lay people doing this and they would be just blown away. I can't do that. My character won't allow me to go down that route. I won't. But I'm going to give a performance to you guys so you can see how it's meant to look. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another performance of how I plan on doing it. Because I want to... I'm not a mentalist. I'm a magician. So most of the stuff I do is either magic or if it's mentalism, it's done in a magic -y way. So uh, I'll show you a performance of how I'm planning on doing it in a second. But first of all, this is Fate by... Uh, by by, by John, you know, this is fake. Let's have a look at it. I'm here with Michael. Hello. Are you all right, mate? Yeah, I'm good. good. I'm going to show you something with some cards. Now, these cards have all got question marks on them, as you can see. Uh, and the reason is this trick's all about fate or destiny. Okay. Mm, it also uses your imagination. You've got a good imagination, right? Yeah. Good. I want you to imagine that over here, these five cards are actually the five. Uh, they're all spades. And it's actually the ace of spades, the two of spades, three of spades, four of spades, and five of spades. Now, we're going to use your imagination. When I snap my fingers in your imagination, I'm going to pick up either the even spades or the odd spades. Okay. Uh, do that right now. What have you got? The even. Fantastic. So hold one in each hand. And what I want you to, because there's two there, two yeah. spades, four spades. What I want you to do, I'm going to snap my fingers again like this. And when I do, you're going to hand me one of those uh, spades. All right? Okay. Which one have you handed me? Two. Okay, so that leaves you with the... Four. Are you happy with that choice? Yeah. Yeah? You could have ended up with anything. Because all this took place in your imagination. It wasn't real. It's not like I was making you pick a card or yeah. anything like that. This all took place in your imagination. In your imagination, you ended up on the Four of Spades. Here's what's interesting. Remember I showed you these cards? Now one of these cards has turned face up. Wait, and what? it's <laughs> actually the Four of Spades, which is crazy, right? But the yeah. interesting <laughs> thing, the interesting thing is that this Four of Spades... Well, I said this was all about destiny, and it's got destiny printed on the other side, which is pretty weird, as you ended yeah. up with the four of spades, and this is the one with destiny. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, what have the others got on them? Well, I said that this was about fate or destiny, because it means the same thing, really. And these are the four cards. Well, they spell out F-A-T-E. And that is a little demonstration in fate and destiny. What? That's no, crazy, right? <laughs> Okay, do you see what I mean? You could see how um, that could really play strongly for a, an audience, like really, really strongly. Um, and and uh, as I said, it's very, very simple. There's no sleight of hand. It's 
just mastering the equivoke is all you need to do. But I know that there's going to be people out there that will just literally buy into destiny and fate and so on and so forth and, and will really, you could probably, you get the right audience, you could do this and then you could set any other magician down and get them to do their best card trick or coin trick and this is the thing that's going to have the most impact on them. Um, but I plan on doing it slightly differently because I am a magician. Um, so I'm going to show you how I'm planning on doing it. I'm doing it more of a uh, sort of a magical appearance of the word fate. Um, just by varying the handling and throwing in a little false count, it, it allows me to kind of change the pace of the trick. And you'll see what I mean in a second, because I'm going to show you a performance of it. But before I do, I, I just want to give this a review. I'm going to give this, uh, uh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. I'm going to give this 85%. Um, I think that uh, this is really good. It, it comes, obviously, the cards are really high quality. The tutorial is really good. It, it's up to Alakazam standard and it's, you know, it's, a, it's, it's just everything has been thought out as you would expect from John Carey. Um, so I'm going to wrap this up now, 85%, but let's have a look at the way I plan on doing it moving forward. Okay. Um, this trick's all about destiny, uh, your destiny. My destiny. Your destiny. And that's why I've got cards with question marks on them, you see, Jack. Uh, another word for just destiny is fate, as you'll probably know. Uh, but my favourite word is destiny, which is why each one of these cards actually has the word destiny on it. Does that make sense? I think so. If it makes sense to you, it makes sense to me. Four, four cards, we're going to put them right there. Okay. Okay. Now, actually, we'll put them here because you're going to need the deck. I'm going to give the cards a shuffle, mix them up, make sure that they are in no particular order. Just give these cards a really good shuffle. And we're going to uh, have you pick a card, but in a very unique and different way. You see, if I made, if I got you to just take a card, you might think somehow I'm forcing you onto one. So we're going to do it completely at random. Take the cards and deal them onto the table, face down into a pile. Okay, start being, you can deal from the top, from the bottom, from the middle. You can put two or three cards down at a time. Don't just go off the top, people think I'm cheating. You can take a couple out and stop whenever you want to. You can take them out the bottom, you can take them out the middle, you can put a couple down at a time and just stop whenever you want Whatever's left in your hand, we're going to eliminate. We're going to get rid of. I don't want to touch these cards. Square them up. And then pick them up and deal them into two piles. Okay? Two piles. Yeah, like you were playing a game of poker with the world's largest poker hand. That's it. Deal them into two piles. Now, think about this for a minute, Jack. The cards were shuffled. Yeah. After the cards were shuffled, you put a random amount of cards down on the table. Yeah. You took them from all over the deck. No way I could know anything. No way we could know what these top two cards are. But we're going to have one of those cards represent the value of a card. We're going to have the other card represent the suit of a card. Okay. That's a way fairer way of doing it than just having a card picked. We've just completely left this to chance or fate oh, or destiny. So let's have a look. We've got a, a six of spades and we've got a four of diamonds. This represents, the, um, this represents the value. This represents the suit. So if we put those two together, we would have the four of spades. Four of spades. Now, here's the thing. I'm a magician. I do magic. I'm destined to be able to find out what your card is even before you've picked it. And to prove that to you, watch these cards. Remember the four cards that said destiny on them? Yeah. If I snap my fingers, now there's five cards. And the reason there's five oh. cards is because the four of spades is right there in between. But here's the weird thing. This four of spades has the word destiny printed on the back of it. So if that four of spades has the word destiny printed on the back of it, it was destined that I would find that four of spades. I knew I'd pick your four of spades because these cards all had destiny on it, right? Yeah. But what's another word for destiny? Right. Fate. And fate would be spelt F oh my God. A T. <laughs> okay, so the final trick we're going to be looking at, really this should be on a hidden gems, but I'm throwing it in here because you can get it from all good magic dealers. Uh, this is uh, Magic Makers. Yeah, Magic Makers. Do you remember them? Magic Makers. They're still around. I remember Magic Makers being a really big deal back in the day. Like, and everybody hated them. The guy that ran it was called Rob Smith Stiff, and I still think it is. I still think it is. I should do some research into this. Uh, Rob Stiff. And I remember people were so annoyed with him over a million different things. And, and, and the old expression was, hey, if you ever deal with him, you either get robbed or you get stiffed. Um, but yeah, Rob Stiff by uh, Magic Makers. 
Um, big deal back in the day, Magic Makers. Not so much now. You don't really hear from them. Um, but when I was at Alakazam, I picked this up um, because I used to do the insurance policy all of the time. And it's as old as the hills. And you know what? It's so old. A lot of magicians probably aren't aware. A lot of newer magicians that have come into magic probably aren't even aware what the, uh, what the insurance policy is. But I remember when I was doing restaurants for years and years and years, I was doing restaurant magic. And I, this used to be my go-to, man. I used to just have this in my pocket because it's funny because everyone can relate to insurance. You know, we have house insurance, we have car insurance, we have life insurance, we have all this different type of insurance. It makes sense for a magician to have magical insurance, a magical insurance policy. It's something that sounds funny, but instantly people can relate to. And then you bring it out and, 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 and it's designed quite funny as well with all of the little clauses and so on and so forth. And then you've got the final revelation. Um, this, like I said, this really should have been a Hidden Gems episode, but I'm including it here on this 555. Um, if you haven't heard of the Magician's Insurance Policy, it's not very expensive at all. It's quite cheap. Um, but it's another one of those tricks that will pack small and play big. You just throw it in your top pocket and you're good to go anytime, anywhere. And it's it's one of those routines that at the end and you do this, um, it, it brings you know brings the table down it really does uh, brings it down as in it brings the house down not as in everyone suddenly gets depressed uh but yeah i mean it's really good it's really really good i, I haven't done the insurance policy the magician's insurance policy for years uh it's i couldn't even tell you where my old one is now i wouldn't even know where to look but uh that's why i bought a new one i bought one for me and one for ryland because it's just a great revelation. It's not difficult. The only problem is it's the same revelation every time, which is something you need to bear in mind when you're working tables. But other than that, this is a really fun trick that you can uh, throw into your act straight away. You just buy it, you put it into your act, and it's one of those tricks that will play really big. You could even probably do this on stage and get away with it on stage. If you haven't seen it, I'm going to do it now for you. Let's have a look at the Magician's Insurance Policy. This is Magic Maker's version. I got this from Alakazam Magic. I'm going to give this 90%. Hello. Hey, Jack. I've got a pack of cards here, buddy. There you do. Uh, and I am going to show you possibly the world's greatest card trick. Oh, okay. definitely the world's greatest card trick. So I'm going to cut the cards onto the table like this, right? Small packets, and as I do any time you want to, just say stop. Stop. There, do you want one more card, or is that it? That's it. Have a look at that card. Remember it, don't forget it. And I'm going to look away, and as I look away, uh, when I dribble the cards down into the uh, table, you're just going to put the card back anywhere you want to. Uh, just put okay. the card in there and... Um, Take your time, Jack. Let's try that again. I'm going to go through. You're just going to put the card back anywhere you want. So there you go. Lovely. And do you want to shuffle the cards or do you trust me? No, you don't. That's fine. Okay, give them a shuffle. By the whole of the parachute. Oops. I was thinking of the five of spades, Jack. That was very good. <laughs> I'm sure you were. I was. That was amazing. So, Jack, this is the greatest trick of all time. I'm just going to spread the deck on the table and I'm going to go back and forth with my finger like this and you're just going to say stop anytime you want to. Stop. Right there? Yeah. That card there. If that was your card, would that be a good trick? That would be a really good trick. The nine of spades. That would be. That would have been a good trick. Um, let me try that one more time. It's my fault. I shouldn't have picked you. Anytime you want to, just say stop. Stop. There. Jack, would that be a good trick if that was your card? Yeah. Was your card the queen of hearts? No. Brilliant. <sighs> well, Unfortunately, I'm going to be here all day. Unfortunately, <laughs> I have failed, but don't worry. I have uh, a way of dealing with this because you see what I actually have is I have insurance against the card trick going wrong. You see, everybody gets insurance these days for anything. You can get insurance for pets, you can get insurance for life insurance, you can get house insurance, car insurance. These days you can get insurance for everything. So why would you not get a magician's insurance policy, Jack? That's right. This is magician's insurance policy. This no, no, this is this is this is great. This is the magician insurance policy. This will insure me against ever getting a trick wrong. Let me show you. Uh, conditions of this policy. Let's just have a quick look. Any of all persons participation must uh, must part. Any of all persons participating must not heckle the magician. So you can't be mean to me, Jack. That's what that's saying. The policy is only valid Monday through Friday and weekends only. Are we okay with that? Is that are we good? We <laughs> die basically. If the magician's rabbit does jump out and attack the audience, this policy is null and void. Have you seen the rabbit around recently? I hope not. Okay, we're good then. The only rabbit I've seen recently is in Sarah's drawers. All claims against. <laughs> All claims against the magician must be filed only after the magician has been paid in full and left the bill. I'm not getting paid for this, so don't worry about it. Um, the policy gives the magician the right to use real magic. 
exceptional. This policy is only valid after the audience believes in magic. Do you believe in magic? Well, work it. That's obviously good. good stuff. This policy guarantees the magician will not fail in acting condition number eight. It means the trick must go right. Finally, uh, the magician does have a final opportunity to magically find the spectator's card. If the magician has failed every attempt, which I have, uh, giving the magician the right to enact a big finish. Please hold all applause until the magician finishes his big finish. Okay, so I'm going to give you the big finish, and then you're going to give me a big round of applause. Okay. Um, this policy never fails. What was the name of your card, Jack? King of Hearts. Really? Well, let's just have a look because right inside here we have Fuck off. the King of Hearts. Remember the deal. Thank you. Big round of applause. There it is. The King so there you go, guys. That's another five by five in the bag. Do me a favour. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Now, you want to see more videos like this? You know what you got to do. You just got to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. Do you want to see another one of these mini review five by five specials? If you do, let me know in the comments down below. I'm going to be back next week with another five by five. I'm going to be back with one of those five by fives where I showcase a magician's five favourite tricks, which is one of my favourite five by fives to do. So uh, don't forget if you haven't already joined the next tricks please do so you can go and do that by going to www.thenettricks.com that's www.thenettricks.com you can go and join now and see what all the fuss is about um you know it's 14.99 a month you can cancel any time although hardly anyone does and that's because we're uploading new content all the time in fact today we've just uploaded i think seven new routines we normally do five but from sometimes we just throw in a few extra just to say thanks to everyone who's a subscriber. So we've uploaded another seven routines, seven or eight. I don't know. I'm filming this on the Friday and I'm not too sure how many we've filmed. It's definitely, I think it's seven, seven or eight. I don't know. But there's a load that have been uploaded today. Go and check those out if you're a Netflix member. And I will be back again soon with another video. Thank you so much for watching. My name's Craig from Magic. TV. Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig, it's six o'clock, it's time for a Magic Live. Now today I'm gonna to be doing a routine uh, called Fate by John Carey. Now this is my handling of Fate. I have put a Magic Live up recently, which is John's handling. This is the way I do it. I do it more as a magic trick. I'm gonna show it to Jack. Hello. That's all right, Jack. Hello, um, this trick's all about destiny. Uh, your destiny. My destiny. Your destiny. And that's why I've got cards with question marks on them, you see, Jack. Uh, another word for just destiny is fate, as you'll probably know. Uh, but my favourite word is destiny, which is why each one of these cards actually has the word destiny on it. Does that make sense? I think so. If it makes sense to you, it makes sense to me. Four, four cards, we're going to put them right there. Okay. Okay. Now, actually, we'll put them here because you're going to need the deck. I'm going to give the cards a shuffle, mix them up, make sure that they are in no particular order. Just give these cards a really good shuffle. And we're going to uh, have you pick a card, but in a very unique and different way. You see, if I made, if I got you to just take a card, you might think somehow I'm forcing you onto one. So we're going to do it completely at random. Take the cards and deal them onto the table, face down into a pile. Okay, start thing. You can deal from the top, from the bottom, from the middle. You can put two or three cards down at a time. Don't just go off the top. People think I'm cheating. You can take a couple out and stop whenever you want to. You can take them out the bottom. You can take them out the middle. You can put a couple down at a time and just stop whenever you want. Whatever's left in your hand, we're going to eliminate. We're going to get rid of. I don't want to touch these cards. Square them up and then pick them up and deal them into two piles, okay? Two piles. Yeah, like you were playing a game of poker with the world's largest poker hand. That's it, deal them into two piles. Now think about this for a minute, Jack. The cards were shuffled. Yeah. After the cards were shuffled, you put a random amount of cards down on the table. Yeah. You took them from all over the deck. No way I could know anything. No way we could know what these top two cards are. But we're going to have one of those cards represent the value of a card. We're going to have the other card represent the suit of a card. Okay. That's a way fairer way of doing it than just having a card picked. We've just completely left this to chance or fate oh, or destiny. So let's have a look. We've got a, a six of spades and we've got a four of diamonds. This represents, the, um, this represents the value. This represents the suit. So if we put those two together, we would have the four of spades. Four of spades. Now, here's the thing. I'm a magician. I do magic. I'm destined to be able to find out what your card is even before you've picked it. And to prove that to you, watch these cards. Remember the four cards that said destiny on them? Yeah. If I snap my fingers, now there's five cards. And the reason there's five oh. cards is because the four of spades is right there in between. But here's the weird thing. This four of spades has the word destiny 
printed on the back of it. So if that four of spades has the word destiny printed on the back of it, it was destined that I would find that four of spades. I knew I'd pick your four of spades because these cards all had destiny on it, right? Yeah. But what's another word for destiny? Right. Fate. And fate would be spelt F. Oh my God. A. T. E. What's that? <laughs> It's a really cool trick. That's my handling of it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. You want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll be back again tomorrow at 6 o'clock with another Magic Live. I'll see you then. Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It's 6 o'clock. It's time for a Magic Live. Today I'm going to be doing a routine called The Whole Thing by Daryl. Now this is part of the Daryl Legacy line through Murphy's Magic. You can get it from all good magic dealers. It's one of the best stand-up tricks you can learn. Uh, and they do it in parlor size and stage size. I'm going to try and do it close up to Matt. No, you're Jack. It's very early in the morning. I've just come in and we haven't had coffee yet, have we, Jack? So we're going to give this a go. How many of you can move Matt? It's, it's simple. <laughs> so, Jack, here's the thing this is a trick with four cards. Now, all four of the cards are special. This card here is a whole card. The reason it's a whole card is because there's a hole in the card. The second card is a whole card because it's a whole card. Now, this card is also a whole card because it's a whole card. And this card is a whole card because it's a card with a hole in it. So we have two whole cards and two whole cards. Now, the thing is, this whole card, not the card with a hole in it, but the whole card, this whole card has got a red back. Now, the interesting thing about the red back whole card is if I take that whole card and I put a whole card on the whole card, it looks like a spot card. Now, the interesting thing is, because that's not really magic, but if I snap my fingers, now we've got a spot card here, we've got a spot card here, and we've got a spot card here. That's kind of weird. Now, that's not really magic, though, still. This is magic. If I snap my fingers, this card here actually becomes a real spot card, as in, it's a spot card. It's not a whole card with a whole card. It's now a spot card. The interesting thing is, if I take the spot card and I tap it to the other three whole cards, like this, one, two, three, four, five, now what we get is we get a whole bunch of spots, which is kind of weird. <laughs> so we've got a whole bunch of spots We've got a whole card. This is still a spot card. This is still a spot card. That's a spot card with the red back. That's a uh, whole card. Sorry, that's a whole card. That's a whole card. Take the whole card and the whole card and you put it together, right? But what you do is you put it together like this. Now, when you put it together like this and you snap your fingers, it looks like you get a big spot card. You don't get a big spot card. That's actually a hole with a spot. It's a spot with a hole in it. So what we have here is we have a hole card with the red back. We have a spot card with a hole. We have this, which is a whole bunch of spots. And we have this, which is a spot card. That all makes sense. What I don't understand is where the hole comes from. Any questions, Jack? Just one. The fuck just happened? <laughs> no, I've heard a man say hole that many times in one go. <laughs> So many jokes. That was brilliant. Uh, <laughs> do me a favour, let me know what you think in the comments down below. You want to see more videos like this, like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll be back again tomorrow at 6 o'clock with another Magic Live. I'll see you then.